We'll go to the far side there in pink. It's a surprising color choice for today. Hi, my name is Kara. I'm actually um, a three-year breast cancer survivor. And I was a patient at Sloan Kettering, so I thank all of you up there for doing incredible work. Um, I'm even getting teary-eyed because I would not be here without all of you. So if everyone could just give them another round. Oh, thank you. It's incredible. Um, I wanted to actually direct a question to Jed because he was speaking about immune therapy. Um, I was diagnosed at 26, and I just was wondering if there's ever a thought about anything preventative. Um, and is immune therapy something that, you know, might be something that we could give to women younger to kind of prevent breast cancer altogether? So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that our, our long-term goal would be to develop a vaccination strategy that could be administered to younger patients who were at high risk of developing cancer. The, the first step in sort of that drug development process that my colleagues have referred to is testing it on um, patients who have cancer now um, because we don't know about the safety and uh, efficacy in the general population yet. But I think if we could come up with something that delivered a risk benefit balance that were acceptable and certainly vaccination strategies in the past certainly have presented a good balance, we, we would be, um, you know, very excited about offering that to people who are at high risk of developing cancer. So I, I have to use this opportunity to point out both a little bit of a distinction, but also something exciting, and, and it builds on what Larry said. So um, you all, if you have children or grandchildren, have them vaccinated for hepatitis B. It's required to go to public school in New York at this point. And I think now maybe boys as well as girls are getting vaccinated uh, against the human papillomavirus, HPV. The thing about this is these are infectious disease vaccines, so you're used to thinking of them that way. They prevent infections with a viral uh, virus and they prevent an illness. But here's the thing. They also prevent down the line two cancers, cervix cancer in the case of HPV. And worldwide, the most common uh, lethal cancer, correct me if I'm wrong, is hepatoma which is caused mostly by hepatitis B. It is a relatively rare problem in the United States, but around the world it's a ubiquitous problem. The point this makes, though, is that you actually have vaccines against cancer today. And the lives saved become very quickly almost uncountable because of that. And so I'm, I'm optimistic that both directly targeting the cancer, which is what one approach uh, of immunotherapy, and also starting to, to target some of the causes will pick off these common diseases and transform them, right? So it's, it's another reason for real excitement, I think. We'll take a couple more questions. Here we go. Yep. And Cliff, it yeah, might be worth mentioning that it is estimated that about 30% of all cancers uh, are the result of some infectious uh, agent. So following the logic uh, that, uh, that Cliff just expounded, it is quite possible that we could prevent uh, most, if not all of those. Mm -hmm. Certainly hepatomas, uh, the HPV-related ones, but there are leukemias that are vi uh, viral in origin and a number of other cancers that are similarly related to an infectious process. Great. 